Hey everybody, my name is Keith Mayer and I'm an IT Pro Technical Evangelist at Microsoft in the US. In my role as an IT Pro Technical Evangelist, my focus is really to serve as an advocate for you as an IT professional in helping you learn and get certified on the latest Microsoft infrastructure technologies. And as part of that role, I'm really excited to be able to bring to you a new study group program called the Windows Server 2012 Early Experts Challenge. This program is a new pilot that we're offering in the United States to help prepare you for the new certification exams around Windows Server 2012 in a peer study group format that you can participate in and complete on your own time when you have availability in your schedule. As a pilot program, I'd really love to get any feedback that you have on the structure of the program and the value that it has to you, as well as any constructive input on how we can make this program better to serve the needs that you have in studying and preparing for Microsoft certification exams. You'll notice on my title slide, I have all of my social media networks that I participate in. So you can feel free to connect with me on Twitter, on Facebook, or on LinkedIn. If you participate in any of those networks, I'd love to hear what you think of this program. I also maintain a blog at keithmayer.com that you can browse out to. And in addition to having information regarding Windows Server 2012 and this Early Experts Challenge, my blog also contains information across the Microsoft spectrum of interest to IT pros. And I'd encourage you to check it out. And if there's information that you're looking for that I can help you locate, just drop me a line on one of my social networks, and I'll be happy to roll that up to my blog and let you know when it's there. So the Windows Server 2012 Early Experts Challenge is an online free study group program that we're organizing into a series of step-by-step -step knowledge quests. Each of these knowledge quests is essentially a learning path that allows you to step through evaluating your skills around Server 2012 in alignment to the new Microsoft certification exams. And initially, we'll be targeting the very first certification exam, but our goal is as we progress throughout this next year to help you obtain the full MCSA, Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate Certification on Windows Server 2012. For the first exam, the knowledge quests are divided into a series of quests, beginning at the apprentice level and then progressing into more focused information around installing, exploring and configuring, networking and virtualizing with Windows Server 2012. At the end of each knowledge quest, when you complete them, you'll receive a special certificate of completion certification that identifies you as having completed that particular level of the program and that's a certificate that you'll receive electronically so that you can print it out and post it in your office or at your desk for others to see. Or alternatively, you can publicize it on your own social media networks, on your Facebook page, LinkedIn profile, Twitter feed, and whatnot, to show the world that you've completed that level of knowledge around Windows Server 2012. For the Windows Server 2012 Early Experts Challenge, we'll be targeting each of the certification exams that are involved in the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate, or MCSA, program. For those that are new to Microsoft certification, in order to achieve the MCSA on Windows Server 2012 credential, there's three exams that are involved in the process. The very first exam, exam 410, which currently, as of the date of this recording, is in beta, is the installing and configuring exam. In addition, exam 411 covers 
exam topics relating to administering Windows Server, and exam 412 covers advanced configuration topics relating to Windows Server 2012. Now, if you have a prior certification on the Windows Server 2008 or related products that are in the list that I have down towards the bottom of my slide, then you qualify for an upgrade path that accelerates the process of achieving MCSA on Windows Server 2012 by passing a single exam, exam 417, the upgrading your skills exam. Now the 417 exam is a rather challenging exam in that it covers all of the new exam objectives from exams 410, 411, and 412 above in a single exam. And it targets specifically those new objectives that are new to the Server 2012 product since Windows Server 2008. As we go through the study process, we'll be targeting the top path towards achieving MCSA certification. We'll be starting off targeting the exam objectives in exam 410, and then progressing on to exams 411 and 412. But as we go through that process, I'll be keen to note the specific study areas that also relate to exam 417. Now, as we move forward, there's just a few rules for being successful in this study group program. It is a peer study group program, and being peer and community related, one of the recommendations is to take charge of your own study process and actively participate in the study program. That means reviewing the recommended study materials and setting time aside on a weekly basis to be able to spend quality time diving into the study materials and the hands-on lab practice exercises. The way that the study materials are being formed is that I'm trying to gear them for about two to four hours per week of your time that you can divide over the week when you have time available. And one of the recommendations that I'd have for you to avoid is avoid trying to cram in all of the study and lab practice into a single week each month. Because that will force you into a mode where you're going through so much information so quickly that you won't have time for your brain to fully digest that information and move it into law, your long-term memory in order for you to remember and understand the information and be successful not only in your career with that information, but also in the certification exam. So do actively participate. I would recommend that up front, you look at your calendar and identify a couple days each week where you have a few hours available that you can up front allocate towards studying for these exams and walking through the practice exercises. There may always be exceptions that arise as vacations and trips and whatnot may occur, but by pre-allocating that time in advance, it gets it into your schedule in a standard way that you'll be able to take advantage of. Part of the participation in this program is also sharing with your other peers that are going through this same process. We're all in this together. These exams are new, and we're all going through the process of studying and preparing for passing these exams. So as you have questions or comments or topics of particular insight that, that you, occur to you as you're going through the study process, I'd strongly encourage you to share that information with others we have a community discussion forum that's been set up on LinkedIn, and I'll be talking more about that towards the end of this presentation. We can use that to correspond with one another and to share all of our insights together so that we build on each other's knowledge and collectively come away out of this program 
with knowledge that's much stronger than what it would be if we were studying alone. So share, collaborate, post questions, comments, topics for discussion, respond to polls and other questions that other members of the group has. Get involved with those active discussions. Now, one thing to keep in mind is as we're sharing information, there are a couple of nots that we want to avoid as well. Specifically, we will not be sharing any brain dumps of exam questions, any exact questions from any certification exams. Not only does that process violate the non-disclosure agreement that we all have to sign and agree to when we participate in the exam process for the Microsoft Certified Professional Program, but sharing brain dumps and exact questions really doesn't help us in our lives as IT professionals. Instead of teaching us knowledge that we can take into doing our jobs as well as passing an exam, all it does is really train us on what the answers are for a few very specific questions. So we're going to avoid any sharing of brain dumps or exact questions amongst our community, and we're going to focus instead on study material that relates to the objective domains that are covered by each exam. In doing so, we'll also be helping to make these certifications as valuable as possible in our industry. So that as we achieve them, they'll have value. Sharing of brain dumps and exact exam questions only helps to dilute the value of these certifications. And if we're investing a lot of our time in preparing for these exams, I'm sure that we all want the resulting certifications to be as respected and valuable in the industry as possible. I also want to discourage you from participating or instigating any holy wars on technology. Uh, we're, we're all here for the same reason in this program, and that reason is to gain specific technical knowledge that relates to Windows Server 2012 and support each other in preparing for the specific Microsoft certification exams. So this program is not the place to have discussions on why product X is better than product Y, um, it's not the place to have those types of rants uh, going on. And instead, we want to focus specifically on staying keenly targeted towards the exam objective domains that, that we're targeting. From a study group schedule standpoint, the way that we'll be approaching this program, because we'll be working with people in a broad geogra geographic areas is that uh, throughout a year-long process, beginning in September, we'll be breaking up the year into trimesters of four months each. And each of those trimesters will be targeting one specific certification exam that leads towards preparing for the MCSA on Windows Server 2012 credential. We'll be working month by month and week by week through study materials that relates to the exam objectives of one specific certification exam and using our online study group forum on LinkedIn as a means to collaborate and support each other to grow our collective knowledge base. So for September through December, we'll be targeting that first exam, the objectives on exam 70-410, the installing and configuring exam. And as we go through this process, we'll be dissecting the exam objectives so that we can align them to week-by-week -week study materials and lab exercises with an eye towards keeping your time commitment down to about four hours per week. Some weeks may be a little less, some weeks just a little more, but on average, we'll try to keep it to about four hours per week. And as we mentioned, we can leverage our online LinkedIn group for peer discussions and guidance. So if we look specifically then at our very first exam, the installing and configuring exam, exam 70-410, the audience profile for this exam are IT professionals, that are involved in the installation and configuration of Windows Server 2012 from a core infrastructure standpoint. So we'll be focusing on the 
the core of installing and configuring Windows Server 2012 as we prepare for this exam. This exam is divided into six exam objective domains, and those objective domains are how the exam writers have aligned the pool of questions. And you'll see as we go down the list of the objective domains that the weighting of each objective domain is relatively equal. So they're each about one-sixth of the exam. So we'll be targeting a couple objective domains each month, starting with installing and configuring Windows Server, then moving on into Active Directory and Group Policy, Server Roles, Networking, and finishing up with Hyper-V Server Virtualization. The way that we'll be aligning those exam objective domains into month-by-month -month knowledge quests, then, is that this month, prior to beginning in September, we'll be targeting the getting started process of broadening our technical base of knowledge overall on Windows Server 2012 with an initial technical overview getting the Windows Server 2012 installation bits downloaded, and setting up your lab environment. That will lead us to the conclusion of the Apprentice Knowledge Quest, our very first knowledge quest in the program. And then in September, we'll be targeting the Installer Knowledge Quest, where we'll be working through the process of installing and configuring the operating system, and installing and administering Active Directory, the first two objective domains. In October, we'll be focusing on the Explorer Knowledge Quest, where we're, we'll be exploring, creating, and managing group policy, and also configuring additional server roles and features on the base operating system. And then in November, we'll be finishing up with the Networker and Virtualizer Knowledge Quests. Each of those Knowledge Quests will target one exam objective domain each on Networking Services and then Hyper-V. That will take us to the end of November. And then in December, you'll have time to reflect back, get ready for the exam, get the exam scheduled, and ideally, successfully pass the exam. So that's our goal between September and December. Uh, we'll get started right away on the Apprentice Knowledge Quest to get ourselves set up. And then September, October, November, we'll target those remaining Knowledge Quests in the program. Remember, at the end of each Knowledge Quest, you'll get another completion certificate that you can share with the world to let them know that you've completed that level of study on the Windows Server 2012 product. So for the getting started piece between now and the September timeframe, what I would recommend is looking at your schedule and thinking about the next three or four weeks and how much time you can allocate. Again, that two to four hours per week is what we're targeting for each of the weekly time commitments in a particular knowledge quest. And so for the Apprentice Quest, the way that I would think about maybe laying that out is in week one, take some time to review the study objectives for the exam that we're targeting, exam 70-410. And look at those exam objectives with a particular eye towards areas that you may need to get additional background knowledge on. What we'll be targeting in the program is the knowledge of each area as it pertains to Windows Server 2012, but in some cases, you may find value in going out and getting some additional industry background knowledge, an area that um, I would recommend maybe considering for a lot of people is when we get into networking services towards the November time frame, the exam targets not only IPv4, but also IPv6, and while we'll be targeting IPv6 in the context of Server 2012 and how it's configured, you may find that leading up to that November timeframe, you may want to get some additional 
generic background on IPv6 so that you're better grounded in that area. So first week, review the study objectives. And then we've got a first look course online that's available at no cost that I would recommend completing the first module of to provide a technical overview of Windows Server 2012. In week two, I target the next two modules that give you an overview of virtualization and multi-server management. Week three, the last two modules of that course that target some of the modern work style enabled features and cloud-based features of Server 2012. And then in week four, download the Windows Server 2012 bits. We'll want to download the version that's already packaged in a virtual hard disk or VHD format and use those bits to set up your own study lab. Now, in order to go through this process, we've already got a site set up for the Apprentice Quest that'll walk you through step by step everything you need to complete to get to your Apprentice Completion Certificate. If you browse out to earlyexperts.net, you'll hit a page that walks you through that process step by step. And if you're located in the U.S. Heartland area, you'll also see over time a growing list of local user group communities that you can also consider joining if you want not only an online study group program, but also an in-person experience. A lot of our local user groups will be offering in-person jam sessions on a monthly basis for everyone going through the program to come together, discuss the study materials and the questions that they have, and build a stronger community to help us all progress through the program. If you're outside the U.S. Heartland or you're not near a user group that's involved in the program, you can still feel free to complete the program on your own time, leveraging the online materials and our community forum group on LinkedIn. Now, to set up your own study lab, the ideal hardware requirements is that you would want to have an existing PC that has either Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8 already installed as your main operating system. To set up our study lab, we'll be using a special feature of these operating systems called Boot to VHD that allows us to establish a dual boot configuration where we are able to preserve your existing operating system and offer a second operating system boot choice that boots from a virtual hard disk. In our case, it'll be a virtual hard disk that has the Windows Server 2012 operating system inside it. That's why when you download Windows Server 2012 using the link provided on the earlyexperts.net site, you'll want to make sure that you download the version that's already packaged in a VHD or virtual hard disk format. Now, because your machine will be booting natively from that VHD on bare metal and running Server 2012 when you choose to boot up the Server 2012 operating system as your operating system boot choice, you'll, you will need to have some hardware requirements that you meet as well. Specifically, since Server 2012 is only available as a 64-bit operating system, you'll need to make sure that your PC is 64-bit capable. Most PCs that have shipped over the last few years are 64-bit capable, so that shouldn't be an issue. In addition, to be able to go through all of the hands-on exercises, I'd recommend that you have at least 4 gigs of total RAM, so 4 gigabytes of total RAM, and at least 60 gigabytes of free space on your boot hard drive, so on your C drive that you're going to be copying the uh, VHD for Server 2012 to. You'll want to make sure that you have at least 60 gigs of free space. You can maybe squeeze by with just a little bit less than that, but in order to complete all of the lab activities over the next few months, I'd recommend having at least 60 gigs of free space. In addition, you'll need to have full administrator rights to your existing 
operating system, the Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows 8 operating system that's already installed, because you'll be going through the process of adding a secondary boot choice for Windows Server 2012 to your computer, and that requires administrative access to your existing operating system. You also need to make sure that you're not running any disk encryption or pre-boot authentication on your existing operating system. The boot to VHD process is not compatible with disk encryption or pre-boot authentication. So if you're using BitLocker or other third-party disk encryption or pre-boot authentication uh, features then, or, or, or software, then you'll want to make sure that you remove that or disable it prior to setting up your study lab. In order to complete any of the exercises involving Hyper-V, you'll also need to have your hardware supporting hardware-assisted virtualization and hardware-assisted memory protection. So that would be if you're running on an Intel platform, Intel VT support. If you're running on an AMD processor platform, it would be AMD V support. In terms of the memory protection, you'll commonly hear that referred to as either XD, execute disable, or NX for non-executable as the features in your firmware that support those, those capabilities. If you're not sure if your PC meets those last two capabilities, I would take some time to boot up, reboot your machine, jump into your firmware setup, Usually you can jump into your firmware setup by hitting a, a function key during the pre-boot process. It'll oftentimes be displayed on your screen as you're booting. In your firmware setup, you should see an a, a firmware choice for either Intel VT or AMD V if your computer supports hardware-assisted virtualization, and a choice for either XD or NX memory protection if it supports the hardware-assisted memory protection in your firmware. Now, if your PC doesn't meet those last two requirements, you can still complete all of the other lab activities except for the activities that relate to Hyper-V. Those last two requirements are specific to requirements for installing and using the Hyper-V role. To set up your lab process, out on the earlyexperts.net site, I have a set of step-by-step -step instructions. And I'll just provide a quick overview here. Essentially, you'll extract the compressed EXE that you download for the Windows Server 2012 bits. When you download the bits in a VHD format, rather than downloading a raw VHD file, because of the size of the file, we provide it in a compressed format. So you download it as an EXE, you run that EXE, and it extracts the VHD file. You would take that extracted VHD file and copy it to your C boot partition. In my case, C colon backslash and then a folder boot VHD. And I'd recommend naming it a short file name that's easy to remember, like server2012.vhd. Then, using the disk part tool from your command prompt as an administrator, you would select that file and attach it to mount it as a drive letter temporarily. Once it's mounted as a drive letter from your command prompt, you'd use the bcd boot command followed by the drive letter that was used to mount that VHD, back colon, backslash, and then the Windows folder. That BCD boot command will add the operating system that's contained inside the virtual hard disk as an additional boot choice. So in this case, that's the command that will add Windows Server 2012 as an additional boot choice. When you reboot your PC from that point on, Server 2012 will be one of the operating system choices. And the first time that you select that, you can go through the complete OS installation process to set up a basic environment. And out on the earlyexperts.net site, I have a video that you can use to walk through the basics of, of getting that process completed. Once you've gotten to that point, your lab is set up, 
and ready for beginning our work in September on the install and configuration of the base operating system. So again, all that information is provided step-by-step -step out on earlyexperts.net. Once you've got your lab environment set up and you've gone through the first look training course online, feel free to join our online peer study group community. It's a, it's a group that's available on LinkedIn. It's called the Windows Server 2012 Early Experts Study Group. You can join that study group by browsing out to join.earlyexperts.net. And I would recommend that as part of your weekly schedule, you plan to check that group on LinkedIn at least once a week for study tips, questions, discussions. Now certainly as you're going through your own study process, if you think of questions or comments or feedback, don't wait and, 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 and post it at the end of the week. As those questions come into your mind, just go out to the site, go out to the group, and, uh, and post them and share them with the rest of the group. But aside from that, I would plan to check in at least once a week to see what everybody else is doing inside the group and to see what other ideas, questions, and discussions may be going on. Once you've gone through that process of completing the training course, setting up your study lab, and joining the LinkedIn group, you're eligible for the apprentice level completion certificate. So I thank you at this point for listening to the presentation. I hope you're excited about this program. I'm excited to begin working with you over the next few months on preparing for our first certification exam. Any feedback or comments that you have, feel free to post to that LinkedIn group. So go out and join the LinkedIn group, and that's where you can post all your feedback, comments, and questions, and we'll be happy to, uh, to work together to collaborate and support one another. Well, thanks very much, everyone. I hope you enjoy this program as much as I hope to myself, and um, I look forward to seeing you online and working with you over the next few months. Thanks very much.